Jake Ludington here at IBM Impact, and I'm here with John Cohn, and we're in the Sports Hack Internet of Things arena, and we're surrounded by uh, drones and race cars and people who can uh, shoot baskets and get sensors. What What is this all about? Well, this is part of a, a hackathon that we're doing uh, called Sports Hack, and what we're trying um, we're experimenting with is uh, wearable fitness and other sort of health related uh, devices and IBM is announcing here at Impact a bunch of new things in the Internet of Things, IOT, and I'm very interested in that. I've been interested in it forever. You know, my whole house is automated and so I'm interested in how technology can kind of mix with people and people's lives. So we started thinking about, you know, how does that work in, you know, in a health and fitness kind of environment and how can you actually build business value out of it? I mean, it's the Internet of Things, uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of hype around it and a lot of it is just, let's see if we can collect the data. And there are many ways that you can like, you know, if you buy like a Fitbit or a, a power band or something like that, you can collect data and you can use your own data. The question is, how do you actually turn that into business value that you can monetize you know, in a, in a, in a business setting? Because that's sort of what we're about. And so, this is so, what this is all about. So how is IBM going to do that? Because I mean, clearly you're not going to get into the fitness band market, I wouldn't no, no, imagine. No, it's not that. Um, well, let me, let me give you an example. Because all of this stuff is, is collecting data and it's going into a, a, a database. We're using our IBM Cloud database and using some of the uh, uh, composition tools that we're announcing today, like uh, what we've announced at this conference, like Blue Mix, et cetera, we're able to put that data into a, a unified place, into kind of a unified data schema, and we're able to do it in a way that's respectful of privacy, but also very accessible. So what we're doing now is imagine, let's just, can you mind, let me just concentrate on one kind, because it's an easier thing to explain. So if you had personal fitness devices like a, like a Fitbit, or you had apps that do the same thing, and I have my phone on me, but things like RunKeeper or MapMyFitness, which are you know just free downloadable apps, you can start to track your basic activity. Okay, now let's say you were a restaurant chain. You know, take something like, um, well, I shouldn't use real names, but let's say you were a restaurant, a sandwich restaurant chain that was had kind of a fitness thing going, right? Well, what we can imagine is how would you be able to take all of these different devices and make a make a, 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 a sort of a social outreach program around that that would be an incentive. So let's say I would set some sort of personal fitness goals, and as I met them, I would be you know here's a coupon for a you know no mayo turkey sandwich. So so to make this a little more real, so let's say you're doing the Jared diet at, at Subway, and you're also wearing that. wearing a Fitbit. That, that's for right. the time. So so the whole idea is is that we're actually making a business platform that you can go to a place like Subway, say, and you'd be able to turn that into. Uh, uh, a marketing campaign. So you'd be able to say, here's my commitment, here's a coupon, and even more importantly, when somebody doesn't, because it turns out that most people make these commitments and they don't do it, you can kind of remind them, hey, come on in for a Diet Coke and we'll give you some you know, encouragement or something. The whole point is about outreach. And it actually has a real, you know, real live fitness component. It's more of a fun component than in fitness, but it turns out to be the same. I've been wearing this thing and it kind of goes, man, you're lazy, you know, and I, I really, it really gets me. But not just a, a retail thing. Think about a, a healthcare, you know, like uh, you know Kaiser or somebody like that. If you wanted to actually create an outreach component that would would help your your the people that you're recovering, you know, keep to their fitness, and and also be able to reach out to them, you know, whether they're doing well or not, with personalized stuff, not just spam, but something that's valuable to them, coupons and stuff like that. Now, what we're doing is we're able to equalize that through all of these different devices which present APIs and be able to present it with a, with a, in a business context. And what was really fun, you know, as kind of a geek, I'm sort of a nerd, you know, is that we were actually able to use these composition tools like Bluemix and stuff. And we were able to take uh, our Xtify uh, social campaign management and our new IoT cloud components and our, our wearable fitness asset that goes in Bluemix that was developed for this sports hack and put it together and in less than a day you'll actually be able to create that thing. So it's able to reach out to you in a respectful way. You have to opt in. It doesn't spam you if you don't want. And uh, and, and it creates the whole marketing campaign, manages the, the outcomes, et cetera. So it's, it was really fun to put all that stuff together. And so it, it's kind of showing how you can put a business context and a real human value context around just all those wiggly numbers. Okay, so we've got some real live examples that are happening here around us right now. But the sports hack is actually an opportunity for developers to build something using this data? 
Yeah, so the sports hack hackathon is it, what we we created this asset in Bluemix, uh, which is our you know our, our uh, Cloud Foundry uh, composition tool, so that it would allow you to unify all of these different devices, you know, whether they're wearable devices or apps or even some of this fun stuff, you know, it, it, depending uh, like things like. Um, Map My Fitness fits into a whole bunch of like fitness exercise equipment that you can actually get at a gym, you know, that you might be a participating gym. And it puts it all into a, a, a single repository in a way that you can actually use a single API to pull it out. And it's, it's secure and private. I'm, I'm a big believer uh, in, in privacy. I don't want my thing spying on me unless I, I'm giving that information freely because I'm going to get some value for it. So the whole thing is about sort of unifying the data picture across all those different platforms and doing it in a way that's easy to you know, get at the, the data that's all kind of normalized and it's also protected. So I can look at sort of broad aggregate. So in a particular cohort, I can sort of say, how am I doing versus all those other slobs, you know, that kind of stuff. But I can get my data, but I'm no, I can't get somebody else's data unless they tell me it's okay. So, so it's kind of an interesting experiment in sort of privacy and security and data normalization. So, it just makes it, it, it uh, what we're preventing is having everybody have to go and say, okay, what's the proprietary format for that thing? And what's the proprietary format? What's the security for that? Ooh, that doesn't have any security. So, and that's pretty important because I, you know, I, I think uh, it's, it's deeply personal. You know, what I found is like with this device, which I just started wearing for this and I've kind of hooked on it, you can find out a lot about it. You know, who's, they know when you've been sleeping they know when you're awake, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, that that's pretty that's pretty eerie if if you know wouldn't want to give that information away but i like to know it